Hello everyone. In this video, we will go over how to work with formulas using c -sharp in the Excel Interrupt Library. We will practice inserting formulas programmatically into this workbook. Right now, this workbook contains random numbers in the first column. The first thing we will do is go over how to insert a formula into column B that will multiply all of these numbers by 2. Let's go to our project. Currently, this project will open up the workbook we just saw. If you have any questions regarding how to set up an Excel Interrupt project, please refer to the first link in the description. A formula can be applied by accessing the formula property of any range object. The formula you then specify will be applied to that given range. To demonstrate this, let's type worksheet.range b1 colon b30.formula equals equals a1 times 2. In this statement, the formula a1 times 2 will be applied to the starting cell, which in this example is b1. The formula will then be dynamically applied all the way into the end of our range, which is b30. That means that b2's formula will be a2 times 2, b3's formula will be a3 times 2, and so on. Let's run our code. As mentioned, the formula in B1 is A1 times 2. That formula is applied dynamically, with the last cell being A30 times 2. But what if we wanted to apply a formula where the cell in the formula doesn't change? Let's go back to our code. We will have to modify the formula so that the cell in the formula does not change. This is actually less of a programming question and more of an Excel question, but I believe this is useful to know. To do this, let's copy the line above and modify our formula to include dollar signs before the letter and the number of the cell. These dollar signs indicate that these are absolute references. This means that the cell column and cell number will not change dynamically as it is applied to a range of cells. Before we test this, let's comment out this line above so that it only applies our new formula. Let's run our code. We can see that the entire range contains the same formula. This time, it did not change dynamically across the range. Let's go back to our code. We now know how to insert formulas for a given range. However, everything so far is essentially hard-coded. In the real world, we will more than likely want to variableize our formulas. Let's copy our first line again and comment out our most recent line of code. Now, instead of hard-coding our range, let's change it so instead of ending at B30, it will end at the last row of our worksheet. To do this, let's remove the number 30 and append the last row of our worksheet, which you can get by calling worksheet.getLastRow. This bit of code that gets the last row will most likely throw an error. This is because getLastRow is a custom extension method that I created in a previous tutorial. I will add a link to that video in the description in case you would like to learn how to get the last row of a worksheet programmatically as well. In this example, our formula will still be applied from B1 to B30. However, this could be useful in a scenario in which you have to apply formulas to several different workbooks where you don't know what the last row is. Let's go ahead and run our code. Our code is still functioning the same as before, even after adding variables to our statement. Let's go back to our code. We've shown how to add variables to our formulas. We could take this one step further and write a function that would abstract away our need to write the formula ourselves and only take in the necessary inputs. Let's pretend that our formula here that doubles the value of the cells in column A was something that we needed to do on a consistent basis across many different columns. We can save ourselves a lot of work by creating a helper function that will do this for us. The helper function we will be creating will be an extension method, so if you haven't already, create a class called extensionmethods.cs. Once the class is created, make sure it is public and static. To create the helper function, let's type public, static, void, double column, this, worksheet, ws, string origin column, string destination column, 
in the body of this function, let's type worksheet dot range double quotes plus destination column plus one colon plus destination column plus worksheet dot get last row dot formula equals equals plus origin column plus one times two. This function will accomplish the same thing as before, except now we have parameterized the columns we're working with. Going back to our remain function, instead of typing out that formula, we can call our extension method by typing worksheet dot double column. We will use column A like before as our origin column. However, this time, let's place our formulas in column C. Let's also comment out the line above as well. Let's run our code. We can see that the helper function has produced the formula we wanted and it exists in column C like we specified. We have now seen an example of a helper function that has abstracted everything out except for our inputs that may vary between usage. This of course is a hyper specific example. It may not be very useful. However, you can take this concept and apply it to whatever you may be working on. I have also omitted some steps regarding validation as there are many inputs that could break this function, which is why I would recommend that you implement exception handling as needed when you design your own helper functions. That's all for this video. If you found this video helpful and want to see more tutorials like these, please like and subscribe to the channel. Also, if there are any topics I haven't covered, feel free to suggest them in the comments and I may make a video about them in the future. Thanks for watching.